say to him I bought a place of ground and I must go and see and I ask you to have excuse me and another said I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them I ask you to have me excuse still another said I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come so that so that seven came and reported these things to his master then the master of the house being angry said to his servant go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the main and the lame and all the, and the blind and the servant said master it's done as you commanded and still there is room amen Hey, camera, can you hear me? You're a good man, Cameron. You're looking sharp tonight, brother. I'm watching you. Careful.
Jesus. Lord Jesus. My brother, in the text that we read, is a text that that makes us that makes us want to be in the new Jerusalem because it's where it's where where the servant of the Lord will be taken is to the new Jerusalem that is all prepared to receive the faithful church the angels they're anxious to sing the songs to grateful to the Lord the golden streets are prepared our our place is already prepared by the Lord everything is prepared the text that we read talks about talks about a preparation to, to go to heaven talks about a project talks about a feast not simply a feast the text the text that we read says that the salvation of the man is a great feast it's not something common that happens every day it's nothing routine that you see in every place this great feast happens in the middle of the people of God where where there are two or three united in my name I'll be there that's that's how Jesus says and it's a moment like this where we are united in the name of Jesus in communion with Jesus is where the salvation reach the heart of the man it's a great feast. Why? Why is it a great feast? Because God is great. The love of God is great. The peace that gives us is great. The calm that the man finds in Jesus is great. The compassion of Jesus is great. The forgiveness of God is great. That's why this feast can only be great, special. Why? Because we are taken from a world and a judge of the death for the judge of life, eternal life, in the presence of the God that's alive. Salvation is that. But unfortunately, a lot of people reject that. Lots of people have their excuses. The text talks about that. The text talks about, talks about the invitation. It talks about parable where Jesus says about a man that made a great feast. They prepared a great feast. And he asked the servants to invite the people. And he said, come, for all things are ready now. A lot of things. Many here. Many use excuses. The salvation of God is for all. But now I would like to ask some of the brethren, what is salvation for you? Huh? What salvation for you? Yes. Everybody for certainly will have some certainly one word to describe it. Salvation to me is to be easy. For some could be security. For those for other ones could be peace, forgiveness, eternal life. Each one of us will have something to say related to salvation. But you know, for many, salvation is a group of none, of the word no. No. It's a group of no. Oh, no, that now I became Christian. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. I cannot eat in a certain place. I cannot drink something. 
I cannot frequent certain uh, certain places. I cannot dress this way. For certain for certain people, salvation is that it's it's a group of no. If something, a bunch of things that are prohibited that is put by the institutions, by the churches, by God, and many people think that they are involved with that, and many confuse that. They, they, they confuse with the no's that that come into our lives, into our, into our way. And many of them give up. Many people that had experiences, extraordinary experiences with Jesus, experiences with cure, libertation, deliverance, people that saw the death and he pleaded and gave, gave them the deliverance. Some people that saw angels. You know what that means? You see an angel in front of you. Right in front of you. People see that. They have visions. People that they were taken they were taken heaven in spirit. They were raptured in spirit and they saw everything that was written in Revelation. They saw the open heaven, they saw the celestial mansions, the golden street, they saw the angels, archangels, the seraphims. And today they're not in the presence of the God. And then you ask, why is someone that, somebody like that, that had experience like this, they left the presence of the Lord. They're, they're out there in the world today. How did that happen with the wedding, you know, out there? Many because he gave more value to the no than the salvation Jesus. The word says to us that says that the salvation is, is the knowledge of the truth. And the word says that when the man knows the truth, and he'll be he'll be free. You know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And then if you, if you knew Jesus, if you were free, what were you free from? From everything that today for many is no. I cannot smoke, I cannot drink, I cannot go some places, I cannot go here, I cannot go there. If you, knew, if you know Jesus, if you have experience with Jesus, let the Holy Spirit free you. Open your heart, truly, and, and let the Holy Spirit live in your life, and you'll be free. Nothing will be a weight for you. Serve the Lord is not a weight for you. It's not heavy. For you to be conducted by the Holy Spirit is not going to be a weight in your life. Nothing's going to bother you. Not even the... Not even the failures of the brother, not even the failures of the pastor will take, will take your salvation. Because if Jesus free you, you'll be, you'll be freed. Nothing, nothing will be on your way for me to go to heaven. The text talks about the father. He, he made a big feast. And then he asked the servant, go and tell the invitees to come. Come for all things are ready now. The word come is a blessing. Because every time the man goes to God, he receives the he receive a blessing from the Lord. The word says many texts that says come to me. Jesus once said, come to me all that are tired and op oppressed and I will free you. What's oppressing you? What's making you be tired? Is it the, the, the sickness? Is it your professional life? Is your personal life? It's the life. It's the life of the Lord. It's, getting, it's making you be tired. You need to go to Jesus. 
come to me. It's not go to church, Maranatha church, assembly, Baptist, Presbyterian. No. Come to me. Go to Jesus. When you come to the house of Lord in an environment like this, you're not coming in a denomination. You're coming before Jesus that's here tonight. It's waiting for you to enter, to open your heart so he can work in your life. Come to me. And I will set you free. Is it difficult? For many, yes. You know why? Because you were stopped. If you're suffering, if you're going through trials and that they don't go away, it's because you stopped. And, and when you start to move and walk in Jesus' directions, you will you'll be under the hands of the Creator. You'll be under the hands of the Lord. Because the hands of the Lord are extended to, his, to the servants. And when you, you get out of that position and go to Jesus, you you receive the, the protection. You receive the guarantees certainly that you need and the Lord will work in your operate in your life, in your family, in your wedding, in your health. The Lord will operate in your professional life, in your secular and you live you live in victories. You have victories in Jesus. Because that's what the Lord promises. The Bible God does not fail. If that's not happening in your life, the failure is in you. It's not it's not in the Lord. It's not in the Word. The Lord does not confuse, make any mistakes. And, and, then, and then the servant, when they invited the people, and the servant is here tonight. And tonight, the Lord has a word for you. Come. Come. Come, for all things are ready now. The heaven is ready. There's a banquet prepared. There's a eternal life prepared for you. Come. Don't waste any time. And he comes with the answer of many. Many people answer like that. They make excuses. Many people don't want. And they went back. The servant went back to the to the Lord. And then he said, I went, I called, I invited many, and some, some even asked, you know, to, they apologized, politely apologized. They left without being seen, politely. Some people married, they didn't, they, they, one person married just made an excuse that he married. I cannot, I can't go. I'm married. Don't bother me. I'm married. I cannot go. Some other people, excuses were like, I'm sorry, but I, but I bought, I bought five yoke of oxen. I, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. What, are, what excuse? Who? Who buy something to, to experiment later? You know, when you when you go try something, you go buy a car, you do a test drive, you know, you go there, and then you buy it. You don't buy something to try later. You try something first to buy it. That's an excuse to not go. And another one got married, got married and left. My brother, those excuses. Many have, many people have. Some of them are justified. Yeah, that's okay. Because the man, many times, he's, uh, he's, in his, he's in his places of interest, his commitments. Sometimes he have 
All the commitments, he has valid excuses not to come to the church. Not here, I can go now, I'll come back later, I'll come some other day. And some talk about, uh, I have commitment. Some other people say, like, I, I'm committed, I'm an important person, I have a lot of business, I don't have time to read the Bible. Bible, I don't have time to sing songs, I don't have time to go to churches, I don't have time to thank the Lord for what He's given me. And some are involved, are, are involved with things that are in this life, with the flesh. Those were the excuses. But the, but the right man did not give up. And he Sadly says, he says to the to the servant, he he go he tells the servant, you go back, you go back and invite go quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor. And who are you gonna invite now? You're gonna invite the poor, the the maim and the lame and the blinds. So he invited those people. So now, so now he made some restrictions. Now you're gonna invite some people. So before the feast was for some selected people, none of them wanted to go because they gave excuses. And now he invited the poor people, the blind, the lame. Those, those cannot use the same excuses. How, how is a poor man going to buy five yokes, a church? How is he going to buy a church to crop? He can't do it. So he doesn't have an excuse. How is the lame, the blind, is going to work with yoke in the field? He can't do it. He's limited. He cannot do it. And how is the poor, he's going to, how poor man is going to marry? How's a poor man going to marry? He's saying poor people can't marry. Uh -huh. He's going to look at Yes. He's going to look at the family, see if the family has any, any goods to, to live in the herons. So when you marry, you look at, you look at that. Any young man look at the family to see if there's anything there for him. You know, it's a to be born a poor is a it's a it's a destiny. To marry a poor people is something else. So go over there, invite the people, invite the blinds, because those will not will not cannot say I can't go to the feast. They will not have excuses. The salvation in Jesus. The man need. The man need to leave everything for love, for the salvation, for the love of the salvation. He has to be needy. He needs to. He will have to need. He will have to be needed. He would definitely need the support of Lord. The man to leave the salvation. To walk with Jesus, to go to heaven, he needs the help, the help of the Father. He cannot go to heaven by himself. He cannot go to self, go to heaven because he's good, because he's rich, because he has power, because he has many yokes. Nobody stop me now because my my farm will grow, my production is going to grow. Nobody's going to stop me from. The man can think like that. The man for go to heaven, he needs to know something. I'm a poor, I'm a needy, but I have a, a God that will give me everything. I have a God that will make me a winner, victorious. Go over there. Go to the streets. And the Holy Spirit will do that, does that. The Holy Spirit is in a rush to save the man. The Holy Spirit are going on the streets, in the houses. The Holy Spirits are going to the church, 
because he's in a hurry, because it's a project. There is a time established by God, and this project will come to independently, whether you want it or not, whether you accept it or not. Nobody's going to prevent you from doing that. Nobody's going to prevent God to, from doing that because it's established. It's eternal. Now only the love of God, only the love of the Father to do something like that. To call, to invite the poor, the blind, the lame. Nobody else would do that. But God does that. Because God looks at the heart. God does not look at the exterior. He doesn't look at our, our looks, how we live, how we do. It doesn't matter. You could be rich. But if you have if you have a heart, a needy heart, God will call you. You could be poor. But if you have if you have oh, a needy heart, God will invite you. You could be lost. You don't you're not walking. You're not walking straight. One day you're good, one day you're not. But if you want the blessing of the Lord in your life, the hands of God is extended to you. Because tonight the Lord brought you here. So you can live here knowing some one thing, nothing that you can use as an excuse to deny the salvation of the Lord. It doesn't work. It does not work. Because the man needs to understand to, that to go to heaven, he needs to accept Jesus. He needs to accept the invitation. He needs to hear the come from Lord. He needs to Put that in his life and walk towards the eternally, the eternity. Because Lord asks, you are you are in need. You want the blessing of the God. Open your heart. The invitation is done. Everything is ready. Come. Come to live in, in heaven. God bless you. Let's hear a song. Bless you, Cameron. Bless you, Wayne.
One word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we adore you. Because one day you invited us to be here in your presence. You, you embraced us with your arms of tenure. You brought us here to be more than victorious in your house, in your work, in your presence, O oh Lord. We render you our gratitude before your altar with our songs with our lives standing in your presence O oh lord and how many are the experiences that we have to to tell O oh lord for everything that you have done for our lives that's why we're we're grat grateful to you lord for all your love for your care for your peace that you have provided in our lives each day because there's none none equal in the world we thank you lord to be good it's good to be in, in this work it's wonderful to serve you lord there's nothing better than to be here in your presence oh lord to hear your sweet voice your sing your songs that visit our lives that talks to our hearts in a wonderful way that's, that's why we render our gratitude and our songs and for everything that you have done and for each heart that your Holy Spirit moved to this place to be here in your house because we know here, you know we're not here for, we're here because we are needed and we need you in our lives. That's why we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Uh, Lord, the show, the Lord show, a man that came here tonight, and and he has a concept. He has a concept about salvation, and for that, he has his criteria for places that that he needs, that he likes. He knows many denominations. He has gone through many denominations. He knows the Bible. He knows the Word of God. But many of these places that he has gone through, not even with that, he has defined with Jesus. He has decided about his salvation. My brethren, what you need is to open your heart to Jesus. Don't look, don't look for place, don't look really into it for the place, those criteria, those prejudgments that you have, it's not going to take you anywhere. God is, is where the needy person is. If you are a needy person, if you accept the salvation of Jesus, He will save you. Leave everything behind. Don't use, don't use your, those, those criteria, those concepts, leave all this behind and come follow Jesus with the truth. Come, He calls you. And if you want tonight, receive Jesus with your salvator, with your salvator of your life. We want to pray for you as we are ending the service. And if you are living that, if you are undecided, about the salvation of Jesus, we would like to help you. We would like to show you that there is really a life out there, a better life for Jesus. There is no other life with denominations, but there is there's a better life for Jesus. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Dear Lord, we want tonight, at this time, put before your altar our lives, our songs to you, our gratitude, because one day you reached us. One day, Jesus, your look 
of love, your eyes of love, your mercy reached our hearts. And today we are happy because we are in your presence. And we know, Lord, that with that is enough to be with you in eternity. And tonight we come before you in your house with the heart full of joy to pray for you to tell you Jesus, that we love you that our desire today is to go to eternity with you Lord the plea of the church is to go and live with Jesus is Maranatha come Jesus take us with your peace that we can have a week in your presence and that your word can remain in our hearts operating lives, spiritual health, faith, and the desire to be in your presence is, is the prayer we do in the name of Jesus. In your name, we say that the wonderful grace of our King and Salvator Jesus, the love of Jesus in our eternal Father, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured upon us for now and forever. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Bless you. Bless you, Cameron. Bless you, Wayne. To all the peace of the Lord. I enjoy always seeing him here in the church, Cameron. I'm always happy to see you here, my man. Okay.